Camp Dog Tales, Episode 2, Dogs and Art. That old master painter from the faraway hills. Frankie, come on this way. Kuka. Then did a rainbow for the rainy days. I'm, my name is Gloria Morales and I live in Joendumu. I work in the art centre, Walakulango Art. I, I am the assistant manager and the, you know, everything that you have to do in an art centre. But this is my kind of passion at the end of the day, the camp dog situation. Hi Blackie, that was a good girl. Good run. Good run, sweetie. Dreamed up the murals on the blue summer skies. The, the Wallakulung Art Centre is about 300 kilometres northwest of Alice Springs in the Tanami Desert. The community is lucky if they get a vet to visit once or twice a year, so Gloria Morales has become not just an expert on running an Aboriginal art centre, but the caretaker of the community's camp dogs, which outnumber people. She drenches, operates on, and feeds her own 18 dogs, as well as the artist's dogs and the dozens of strays that hang around waiting for her attention. You'd think that so many dogs would be bound to wreak havoc for the artists, all of whom paint sitting on the ground under the shaded veranda of the art centre. But one of the centre's more well-known artists, Otto Sims, who lives right across the road, doesn't seem too troubled by their presence. They've been um, ripping my olive trees and my palm trees, which I've been trying to grow them, and my flowers. Yeah, but it's fun seeing dogs ripping everything. You like watching them do it? Yeah, then I can buy another plant and plant it. Otto's tolerance of camp dogs is not met by everyone at the art centre. Other dog lovers have had paintings ruined by clumsy camp dogs and struggle to deal with their numbers. So do you, you see dogs here at the art centre running around on paintings and that sort of thing? Yeah, everywhere they run around. Dogs when people are doing painting. Yeah, they spill all the paints too. Yeah, the dogs everywhere, even here. So even the people who love dogs here think they're a bit of a nuisance? Mm, yeah, they are. Even they come with dogs. It's a bit like nuisance too. Yeah. While the artists have varied opinions on camp dogs and their involvement in the art scene, other people from the local community have nothing but good things to say about the improvements that the camp dog program at Wallakulung Art Centre have made. Sam McKell has lived and worked in the community for over 30 years. We used to just have these brown, grey leatherback dogs. Most majority of them were like that, which was really sad. And they're looking wonderful. It is thanks to Gloria and Wallakulung artists, Gloria who had the time and the energy to put into beginning off this sort of dog program that Wallakalong's taken up. Gloria Morales combined her two passions, art and camp dogs, in a paper she wrote for Australia's Art Monthly magazine. One of the things you said is that you can tell an authentic Aboriginal artwork by the dog pee on the canvas. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, in a way, if, if you found a painting that is absolutely perfect and somebody says, you know, it has been painted in a community and there is no dog hair and there's no dust and you go... I doubt it, you know. That's the reality. They are together with the dogs, and the dogs is like interacting and sitting by their side and sitting on top of the painting in many cases. But and th that is going to be, and, and, you know, if you don't find a hair, you know, paintings are absolutely perfect, it's, there is something very suspicious about it. <laughs> <laughs> up here on the wall do you think we could have a look at one of those and, and look for evidence of dogs I don't know, but they should be at the back probably how do you tell if there's dog pee on a canvas um, sometimes there are kind of a slightly yellow smudges at the back um, I packed today a painting in which it was pretty obvious that there was the dog had pee on it and we as normally we try to clean them up and we try to wash them and stuff but this one obviously passed the passed the test of cleaning and 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 you see that like the little mark and the yellow is drips down and i think oh well you know this is what it's going to be the people don't know no one is going to know one day they're going to ask what is that yellow mark in the back hmm. yes i see the back <coughs> 
this painting I cleaned it up. But here, evidence. You see that? Yeah. And there? Yeah. And there? So that is a pole. Oh, smudge so that is smudge mark. mark. Yeah. So when the painting was was still wet, that probably the dog ran through it. So that's that's one of them, and and you see it in many many paintings. But it's you know like that doesn't interfere that much with the work. Yeah, you really know. need to have an expert eye to actually so pick it as a, a paw print. Don't you? Yeah, you don't notice it in many in many paintings. You don't notice it, but that is a paw print. Now that we've seen that camp dogs can be model canines and artists, Corny, my own purebred camp dog, says there's an important question that needs to be answered. <laughs> if it's true that people resemble their dogs, do half-wild dogs need half-wild owners? <laughs> I guess we'll just have to wait till the next episode to find out. What a beautiful job on that wonderful day That old master